Hey everyone, and welcome to our channel where today we're stepping outside the tidy lines of textbook history and into the realm of the strange, the unexpected, and yes, even the bizarre. Because let's be honest, sometimes the footnotes of history are where the most fascinating stories hide. We're talking about those little known anecdotes about historical figures, the kind that make you question everything you thought you knew. These aren't just fun facts, they're glimpses into the personalities, quirks, and yes, even the flaws of the people who shaped our world. So buckle up as we embark on a journey through history, one strange fact at a time. Get ready to meet the emperors, the queens, the conquerors, and the revolutionaries in a whole new light. Let's dive in. When we think of historical leaders, it's easy to get caught up in the big picture. The wars they fought, the laws they passed, the empires they built. But behind those grand narratives are human beings, as complex and contradictory as any of us. And just like us, they had their own quirks, obsessions, and moments of sheer absurdity. These quirks might not make it into your average history textbook, but they offer a fascinating window into understanding these figures as people, not just names on a timeline. So, get ready to see beyond the statues and the portraits and meet the real people behind the legends. Because sometimes, the most humanizing stories are also the strangest. Over the next few chapters, we'll be unearthing some of the most bizarre, surprising, and downright unbelievable facts about history's biggest names. We'll uncover hidden passions, strange habits, and moments of unexpected brilliance or maybe just plain weirdness. From Napoleon's unfortunate encounter with a horde of bunnies to Cleopatra's penchant for dramatic entrances, get ready to see these iconic figures in a whole new light. And who knows, you might just discover that history is a lot more entertaining than you thought. So without further ado, let's delve into the first of our bizarre historical tales. Get ready to be amazed. Napoleon Bonaparte, the Emperor of France, the conqueror of nations, the man who struck fear into the hearts of Europe, was once thoroughly defeated by a horde of fluffy bunnies. You heard that right, bunnies. The year was 1807, and Napoleon, fresh off a string of military victories, decided to celebrate with a little rabbit hunt. Seems harmless enough, right? Well, things took a turn for the strange when the rabbits, instead of scattering in fear, decided to fight back. Hundreds, maybe even thousands of bunnies charged at Napoleon and his men. The emperor and his entourage, armed with muskets and swords, were quickly overwhelmed by the sheer number of fluffy assailants. Imagine the scene. The great Napoleon Bonaparte fleeing in terror from a horde of fluffy bunnies. His hat knocked askew, his coattails flapping, the Emperor of France reduced to a laughingstock by the very creatures he intended to hunt. Accounts differ on the exact details of the bunny onslaught. Some say the rabbits were unusually aggressive, perhaps driven mad by a strange disease. Others claim they were simply defending their territory with unexpected ferocity. Whatever the reason, the rabbit rebellion was a humiliating defeat for Napoleon. It's a story that serves as a reminder that even the most powerful figures in history are still human, capable of being humbled by the most unexpected of adversaries. And it's a story that proves once and for all that you should never underestimate the power of a bunny on a mission. Cleopatra, the last active ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt, is a figure shrouded in intrigue and fascination. When we think of Cleopatra, we often think of her beauty, her love affairs, her tragic end. But Cleopatra was more than just a pretty face. She was a shrewd politician, a skilled diplomat, and a cunning strategist. One story that exemplifies Cleopatra's dramatic flair involves her first encounter with Julius Caesar. Roman accounts tell us that Cleopatra, knowing Caesar's penchant for the theatrical, had herself smuggled into his presence rolled up in a carpet. Talk about making an entrance. This act, whether completely true or embellished by historians, speaks volumes about Cleopatra's understanding of power and presentation. She knew how to use her intelligence and charisma to her advantage, and she wasn't afraid to break with convention to achieve her goals. In a world dominated by men, Cleopatra held her own. She navigated the treacherous waters of Roman politics, secured her throne, and left an indelible mark on history. 
But enough about politics, let's talk about something a little more. Beyond her political acumen, Cleopatra was known for her extravagant lifestyle and love of luxury. She adorned herself with lavish jewels, bathed in milk and honey, and surrounded herself with exotic animals. But we're not talking about your average goldfish here, folks. No, Cleopatra was said to have kept pet cheetahs, monkeys, and even a giraffe. Imagine the logistics of keeping a giraffe happy in ancient Egypt. That's some next-level pet ownership right there. These animals weren't just for show, though. They were symbols of her power and wealth, a living, breathing testament to her status as the Queen of the Nile. Cleopatra's love of the exotic extended to her beauty regimen as well. It's said that she used crushed beetles to create her signature red lipstick. And forget about your fancy snail mucin face masks. Cleopatra was said to have used crocodile dung as part of her skincare routine. Hey, whatever works, right? Now, I'm not saying you should swap your moisturizer for some crocodile dung, but it does make you wonder about the lengths people went to for beauty in the ancient world. Genghis Khan, the founder and great Khan of the Mongol Empire, is a name that echoes through history. A brilliant military strategist and ruthless conqueror, he left a vast and complex legacy. His empire stretched from Eastern Europe to the Sea of Japan, the largest contiguous land empire in history. His conquests were brutal, leaving millions dead and civilizations in ruins. Amidst the bloodshed, there's a surprising environmental twist. His conquests may have inadvertently helped cool the planet. Depopulation allowed forests to regenerate, absorbing carbon dioxide and cooling the planet. A brutal chapter with an unexpected environmental impact. A reminder of the far-reaching consequences of our actions. Now, I'm not saying Genghis Khan was some kind of environmental superhero. His primary goal was conquest, not climate change mitigation. But it's interesting to consider the unintended consequences of his actions. The Mongol Empire, under Genghis Khan's leadership, ushered in an era of Pax Mongolica, a period of relative peace and stability that facilitated trade and cultural exchange across Eurasia. This period of peace and stability, however, was built on a foundation of violence and conquest. It's a complex legacy, one that continues to be debated and analyzed by historians today. Genghis Khan's story is a reminder that history is messy, full of contradictions and unintended consequences. It's a reminder that even the most influential figures are products of their time, and their actions can have far-reaching and often unpredictable effects. So the next time you hear about Genghis Khan, remember this. He wasn't just a conqueror, he was an accidental environmentalist. Okay, maybe not intentionally, but his actions had a significant impact on the planet, for better or for worse. Ivan IV Vasilyevich, more famously known as Ivan the Terrible, was the first Tsar of all Russia, and his reign, as his moniker suggests, was marked by both grandeur and brutality. He was a complex and contradictory figure, known for his intelligence, piety, and fits of paranoia and rage. Ivan ascended to the throne at the tender age of three, and his early reign was marked by power struggles among the Boyar families, the elite nobility of Russia. These early experiences, coupled with the death of his beloved wife Anastasia, are believed to have contributed to his descent into tyranny. In 1565, Ivan unleashed the Oprichnina, a period of state-sponsored terror that targeted the boyars and anyone perceived as a threat to his authority. The Oprichniki, Ivan's personal guard, were granted absolute power and became notorious for their cruelty and excesses. They dressed in black, rode black horses, and were known to behead their victims or impale them on stakes. Imagine a cross between the NSA and a biker gang, but with significantly less regard for due process. The Oprichniki became symbols of Ivan's reign of terror, striking fear into the hearts of the Russian populace. They were above the law, answerable only to Ivan himself, and their reign of terror lasted for seven long years. Their methods were brutal and indiscriminate, leaving a trail of blood and suffering in their wake. Families were torn apart, villages were razed, and those who dared to oppose Ivan's will were met with swift and merciless punishment. The Oprichnina had a devastating impact on Russia, weakening the boyar class, destabilizing the country, and paving the way for a period of turmoil and unrest known as the Time of Troubles. 
Ivan the Terrible's reign serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power and the devastating consequences of tyranny. He may have been a brilliant strategist and a visionary leader, but his descent into madness and cruelty ultimately overshadowed his accomplishments, leaving a dark stain on Russian history. And hey, if you ever find yourself in a time machine back in Ivan's court, maybe avoid wearing black. You wouldn't want to be mistaken for an oprichnik. All right, let's talk about Catherine the Great of Russia. She was known for being an enlightened monarch, a patron of the arts and literature, and for expanding Russia's borders. She corresponded with Voltaire and established the Hermitage Museum. But Catherine also had an eccentric side. She had a secret collection of explicitly erotic furniture. We're talking chairs shaped like, well, you get the idea. Whatever the reason, it adds another layer to our understanding of this fascinating ruler. Now, it's easy to get caught up in the, let's call it the nature of this collection. And trust me, I could spend hours discussing the various theories surrounding it, but it's important to remember that this is just one small aspect of Catherine the Great's life and reign. Focusing solely on the more salacious details can overshadow her very real accomplishments as a ruler. She reformed Russian law, expanded education, and modernized the Russian military. These are not small feats, people. However, the existence of this furniture collection does raise some interesting questions. What does it tell us about Catherine's personality? Was she trying to make a statement, or was it simply a private indulgence? Ultimately, the erotic furniture remains an enigma, much like Catherine herself. It serves as a reminder that history is full of surprises and that even the most powerful and influential figures had their secrets. Winston Churchill, the man who led Britain through its darkest hour during World War II, a Nobel Prize winning author, a master orator. We all know the image, the bowler hat, the cigar, the V for victory sign. But Churchill was a man of many facets, some more cuddly than others. Yes, you heard me right, cuddly. Because beyond the wartime leadership and the stirring speeches, Winston Churchill shared his life with an unusual companion, a lion named Rhoda. Rota wasn't just a passing fancy, either. Churchill received the lion cub as a gift from the people of Ethiopia and kept him at his country home, Chartwell. Apparently, Churchill was quite fond of Rota, even allowing the lion to attend some meetings. Now I know what you're thinking. A lion? As a pet? That's insane. And you're not wrong. Lions are wild animals, not exactly known for their domesticity. But hey, these were different times. Imagine being a fly on the wall at Chartwell during those days. Churchill, delivering one of his famous speeches, cigar smoke swirling around him, and in the background, you hear the occasional roar of a lion. You've got to admit, that's a pretty epic scene. But Rhoda's time at Chartwell wasn't all sunshine and roses. Lions, as it turns out, can be a bit of a handful. There were incidents of Rhoda escaping his enclosure, causing a bit of a stir among the locals. I mean, can you imagine bumping into a lion on your afternoon stroll? Eventually, for the safety of everyone involved, Churchill made the difficult decision to relocate Rota to the London Zoo. I'd like to think they visited each other often, Churchill sharing stories of political intrigue, while Rota, well, probably just roared in response. The story of Churchill and Rota might seem like just a bizarre footnote in history, but it reminds us that even the most serious and imposing figures have unexpected sides. And who knows, maybe a little bit of lion-hearted courage is what it takes to lead a nation through a world war. Buckle up, we're diving into Kim Jong-il's world. Not just politics, but cinema. Yes, the glitz and glamour of cinema. Kim Jong-il was a massive film buff. He wanted to make movies too. Epic, propaganda-filled masterpieces. You'd think he'd start small, but no. He aimed for the stars, claimed to write six operas. Things get stranger. He wanted South Korean talent. Now, relations between North and South Korea have always been, shall we say, complicated. So when Kim Jong-il decided he wanted South Korea's most famous director, Shin Sang-ok, and his actress wife, Choi Yoon-hee, 
to help him elevate North Korean cinema, he didn't exactly send them a polite invitation. Instead, he had them kidnapped. Yep, you heard that right. In 1978, Choi Eun-hee was lured to Hong Kong under false pretenses and whisked away to North Korea. A few months later, Shin Sang-ok was also abducted while trying to find his wife. Talk about taking your love for movies to the extreme. The couple spent the next eight years in North Korea, forced to make films for Kim Jong-il. They eventually managed to escape while on a trip to Vienna in 1986, seeking asylum at the U.S. Embassy. It's a truly bizarre story, even by the standards of international espionage. But it goes to show that even in the most isolated and authoritarian regimes, the allure of cinema can be a powerful force. And in Kim Jong-il's case, it led him to commit one of the most audacious acts of cinematic obsession the world has ever seen. So we've talked about leaders with strange pets, unusual fears, and even a penchant for dramatic entrances. But get ready for this, because Peter the Great of Russia takes the cake when it comes to bizarre hobbies. Peter had this fascination with teeth, not just his own, but everyone's. The Tsar enjoyed whipping out pliers and examining his courtiers' and servants' mouths. Imagine serving Peter his morning vodka and suddenly, bam, he's admiring your molars. Honestly, I think Peter just liked the feeling of power it gave him. Now I know what you're thinking. John, this is all a bit much, even for a bizarre history video. But here's the thing. Peter's dental obsession wasn't just some weird quirk. It actually tells us a lot about the man and his reign. Peter the Great was obsessed with modernization. He wanted to drag Russia out of the medieval world and into the Enlightenment, tooth and nail, literally. And what better way to show his absolute power than by controlling something as personal and, let's be honest, terrifying as dental work. Think about it. In a time when pain and suffering were commonplace, the Tsar could inflict pain on a whim. It was a stark reminder of who was in charge. But it also showed his fascination with the human body and the scientific advancements of the age. So the next time you're at the dentist, feeling that little twinge of anxiety as the drill approaches, just be thankful you're not living in 17th century Russia. Because you can bet your bottom ruble that Peter the Great wouldn't hesitate to pull that tooth, with or without anesthetic. And that, my friends, is a truly bizarre fact for you. From the teeth-pulling Tsar of Russia, we journey to the British Empire, where Queen Victoria, despite her stoic strength, lived under constant threat. This is the story of Queen Victoria and the bizarre attempts on her life. Queen Victoria ruled for over six decades, longer than any other British monarch before her. Her reign saw incredible technological advancements and a burgeoning empire. Assassination attempts on Victoria were numerous and audacious, often dramatic or ridiculous. Living in the public eye came with its own set of occupational hazards. That's right, you heard me correctly, stationary supplies. In 1840, a young man named Edward Oxford attempted to assassinate the queen while she was riding in a carriage with Prince Albert. Now, you'd think that someone plotting to kill a monarch would arm themselves with, you know, an actual weapon. But Edward Oxford was apparently not one for convention. Instead of a sword, a dagger, or even a poorly made bomb, Oxford chose to attack the Queen with a pair of pistols loaded with paper and tobacco. Yes, you heard that right, paper and tobacco. Now, I'm no historian, but I'm pretty sure that paper and tobacco, even when launched from close range, are unlikely to cause any serious harm. It's more likely to leave a slight paper cut and maybe a lingering smell of stale cigarettes. Oxford's attempt, while utterly ridiculous, highlights the bizarre nature of some of the threats Victoria faced. It's almost comical, if it weren't for the very real danger she was in. It makes you wonder, what was going through Oxford's mind? Did he genuinely believe he could harm the queen with paper and tobacco? Or was this a desperate cry for attention? From Napoleon's bunny brouhaha to Peter the Great's dental dilemmas, from Cleopatra's grand entrances to Queen Victoria's stationary assailant, we've journeyed through the annals of history to uncover the strange, the quirky, the downright bizarre facts about some of the world's most powerful figures. 
It's easy to think of historical leaders as these untouchable figures, frozen in time on dusty textbook pages. But as we've seen, they were also human beings with their own quirks, obsessions, and yes, even bizarre habits. Remember, history isn't just about dates and battles and treaties, it's about the people who shaped those events. And sometimes, those people were just plain weird, and that's okay. In fact, it's what makes history so fascinating. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed these bizarre facts about historical leaders, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more intriguing content. See you next time.